Next, I'm going to share findings from interviewing neurodivergent people. Finding number one, neurodivergent people work in a range of roles and organizations. More neurodivergent people work in senior level jobs than people with learning disabilities. Neurodivergent leaders work in all different types of company departments and types of organization. Finding number two, most neurodivergent leaders value working as freelancers as well as in salary jobs. Everyone I interviewed liked having a part-time salary job and freelance jobs at the same time. Their freelance work was usually creative, like writing, directing, or visual art. And it was also common to do freelance work as access consultant. Even when people's salary jobs were going well, they felt tired. People were less likely to have their access needs met at their salary job. They had to behave in ways that were uncomfortable and difficult, like making eye contact and having small talk. People felt lonely and confused. This made them wonder if they were bad at their jobs. Freelance work was important because they were in charge of when they worked, where they worked, and who they worked with. They could connect with other disabled and neurodivergent artists who worked like them, or they could work on their own. It helped neurodivergent people remember they were good at their jobs. Finding number three, neurodivergent people can be capable and effective leaders and managers. Everyone I interviewed had very high skills and impressive careers. People enjoyed the tasks of being senior leaders and managers, like planning and delivery of projects, and direct line management of staff. People really enjoyed making things better at work for the people they managed. This was true whether they managed neurotypical or neurodivergent people. People tried hard to make changes and give people second chances if they made mistakes, but could still fire people if they had to. Finding number four, different neurodivergent people had different access needs, but being clear was always important. Being clear was important for neurodivergent people to make choices about what they should do. As an example, one person requested an access need and was told by their manager, yes, we know about that and we're working on it. The neurodivergent person said they would much rather be told, no, we're not doing that right now. This might sound like their need is being taken less seriously, but it's more clear. People need clarity to decide whether they'll work from home, attend meetings, or agree to a new project. By trying to be nice rather than clear, colleagues sometimes cause more problems. Finding number five, a company's working culture and their systems are the biggest difficulties for neurodivergent leaders. The core tasks of senior jobs weren't very difficult for the people I interviewed. However, being a senior leader came with difficult expectations about how they would work. People were expected to be more loyal to the organization, even if the organization did something wrong. People were expected to give up their access needs if something needed doing quickly. People were expected to work closely with other senior leaders, even if they ignored their access needs and said ableist things. These expectations were often not clear in job descriptions when people applied for their jobs. Trying to do these things meant people were exhausted, angry, and didn't like the people they worked with. There weren't any policies or people that could resolve conflict or change things at the company. This left neurodivergent people feeling highly isolated and resented within organizations. One interviewee said they couldn't recommend a disabled person apply for a role like that. Finding number six, 